Welcome to the Adam Does Movies podcast. I'm, of course, Adam. And today we're talking movies as always. Specifically, the topic on this episode is going to be on video game adaptations. Movies from video games. Also, you know, we might splash movies from books. Although, I think it's fair to say that a large swath of movies that come out are based on a book or a play or a short story or something that uh, Bob's been working off in his garage for five years and he finally got it off the shelf and into the hands of a studio exec. Regardless, there's an excuse that I've noticed coming up a lot because of the popularization of video games turned into movies, and that is you're not a fan of the game, so the movie's not for you. It's such a cheap, cop-out, lame-ass excuse for when a movie based on a video game that you like, just isn't very good. I bring it up now again because this is a topic I've covered a couple times in the past, mainly from the book side of things. But I bring it up now because video games have been on the rise, both popularity um, in terms of like the PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, all that stuff, PC gaming, of course, to video games becoming movies. Like every year we get more and more of them and the quality is actually getting better, I think overall. There have been gems I grew up with that I thought were pretty good, like Mortal Kombat, which came out in the 90s. It's absolute 90s schlock, but I think it's done very well uh, for what it is. I also think that you can appreciate the movie if you're not even a fan of Mortal Kombat. Now, <laughs> you gotta be a fan of like, the Ninja Turtles, Three Ninjas, kind of slapsticky action humor movies. If you're not a fan of that, you're not going to like Mortal Kombat because it's it's got a lot of that in spades. But it, that's an example of a movie that both stands on its own, it gets the story across, even if it's absolute nonsense, and it pays a ton of service to the video game and its fans. You got newer movies like Mario, it, it's complete nostalgia bait. You know, every single frame of that film has something that a video game fan can appreciate. Oh my God, there's Toadstool. Oh, look at, there's a the one-up block from the first game. Now I'm just kind of talking out of my ass, even though I've played all of these Mario games. <laughs> oh, there's the one-up block from Mario 1. <laughs> I'm off the cuff, it's gonna be rough. But yeah, you, you'll see things, uh, the cheap cheeps jumping in the air, the, the little fish things. You'll see things like that, King Boo, off uh, during the ceremony, and you'll go, okay, that's from that game, I love that they added that in, but they're really just Easter eggs. They're, they're not really big parts of the film. That, that's where the story comes in, and that's where you put a competent script together. I just saw Five Nights at Freddy's with my kids. We're not... I mean, I'm familiar with the games. I've never played them. I think there's seven or eight or nine of them at this point. They're very popular. My son knows more about the story. He read the comics, I think, that companioned with the games. He's played some of the iterations via Roadblocks or Roblox, whatever the fuck that's called, that stupid-ass app. Um, he likes that stuff. He's never outright played Five Nights at Freddy's. My daughter doesn't care about it. But the movie looked good. It looked really fun. It looked like it was going to be a little creepy. The trailers were great. You have these Chuck E. Cheese-esque animatronics coming to life, terrorizing the uh, rundown pizza place. All right? There's a guy working the night shift. There's other people there. Uh, chaos ensues. Well, it turns out the movie is very convoluted. The story is absolutely insane there, there's kids souls trapped inside these machines it, it's just absolute bonkers and i i said so much in my review i said listen if you're a fan of this game because now when you review movies or review anything it seems like you have to have 45 caveats so you don't hurt people's feelings or at least so you set the set the table for them uh, because apparently people just don't know how to communicate with one another or understand where someone's coming from I went into the movie expecting a good movie. I didn't go into it expecting fan service to the video game uh, audience only and nothing else. And that's what it was. But even in that sense, was that good fan service for you? Because this story was ass. This was terrible. And if that's a companion to the game, that actually turns me off from wanting to ever play the game. I was honestly hoping to be pulled in. Sucked in, given an excuse to actually try it out. Because I am a gamer, I play a ton of games. 
but it didn't do that. And even though I did have the caveat by stating, I haven't played this, I wanted to go in and get some laughs and some scares as it was presented. If you are a fan of Five Nights and Freddy's, or at Freddy's, whatever the fuck it's called, you don't need to listen to me. You already made up your own mind. You're going to this movie day one. You're probably going to have a good time. Whatever. That's your prerogative. But um, don't throw it at me when I'm trying to review this from the standpoint of a movie on a movie channel. And the comments were gold, as always. And I wanted to say to myself, you know what? They're probably like seven-year-olds. But then I looked, and Five Nights at Freddy's has been around for almost a decade. So these people are at least 10, and I don't think they were playing it when they were one. So sadly, these people are probably in their late teens, early 20s, which is just pathetic based on some of the stuff they said to me. Uh, Insulting not only my intelligence, but my kids, my wife. Like, it's just just pathetic and, uh, and sad. Especially when you're dying on the hill of Five Nights at Freddy's. How embarrassing. Regardless of all that, The takeaway that 90% of them said was, it's all about the lore. It's about the rich lore. Really, the rich lore is what we're going with on this dumb movie? That's sad. I feel sad for you. Who says that about movies? I don't like the Twilight films, but even the book readers weren't coming out going, it's all about the rich lore. It's about the lore, Adam. (laughs) Maybe some did, but for the most part, it was it was a little bit more like, eh, well, yeah, it's 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 teen crap, and uh, I like the love story and all that stuff. Fair enough, you do you, that's fine, but don't give me some bullshit. I didn't understand it because of the complexities of the lore of the rich, vibrant storyline. I uh, on my TV, if you're watching the stream, I have what is this free guy with Ryan Reynolds funny enough it's not even based on a video game but it is a video game movie it's got callbacks to Grand Theft Auto and to Fortnite and to a million other little gems it's okay I didn't love free guy I thought it was fine a lot of people really enjoy it I can see why it's lighthearted. it's fun it's got a lot of action and again it tips its hat a lot it does however have a, a, a good story or at least an interesting different story And that's why, um, I think that's what people resonate with. You look at something like Ready Player One, it's the same lines. Based on a book, book is chock full of nostalgia, a lot of it based around gaming. The movie went all in on this by Steven Spielberg. I love Ready Player One. I can see its faults though. I get some hangups, I have some hangups with it too. But for the most part, I think the movie is wonderful. It's action packed, it's got some... Uh, Cool characters, got a lot of great callbacks to movies, video games, books. It's got it all. And so you can definitely do it right. Another one that I really love, and again, these are three examples of video game movies that aren't based on video games, is Wreck-It Ralph. A film that is chock full of characters from video games, from Sonic the Hedgehog to Bowser from Mario Brothers to made up versions of games, kind of a Halo-esque shooter in there. You have a Mario Kart game, Candy Crush, not Candy Crush, what's it called? Candy Rush? Sugar Rush. Sugar Rush, I got there, I figured it out on my own. Which is a playoff of Mario Kart, and then Mario Kart would later come out with a map that's basically Sugar Rush, so it's kind of this back and forth collaboration. But I like this film a lot because they take a character from a video game who's a bad guy, they put him in a scenario where he doesn't want to be a bad guy, and the rest of the movie is him trying to find himself while introducing a lot of these different gaming elements. Very well done, very well put together. The sequel is atrociously bad. I hate Ralph Breaks the Internet. It it does a disservice to the first film. It does a disservice to the message and the characters. Ugly movie. And that's how you do it wrong. They took what worked and they quadrupled it and then forced in a bunch of advertising. I didn't feel like I was being advertised to in Wreck-It Ralph when Street Fighter characters showed up like Ryu and Ken. It just looked like a tip of the hat to those characters they added to the story or when the Pac-Man ghosts fly by and and Pac-Man's after them. But when I got to Ralph Breaks the Internet... And there was a Twitter area where they were tweeting at each other and Amazon had a space and Pinterest had a location. 
it felt like corporate garbage trying to get us to sign up for these products. Just like the Emoji Movie was just 100% corporate trash. Let's get back to the video games though and the movies that worked. I just can't believe how dumb people are about this Five Nights at Freddy's thing. It's really wild. You take something like Sonic the Hedgehog that came out not that long ago. This is a great example of a movie and some people are saying that this was intentionally done for marketing purposes. I don't buy it for a second. Way too much money would be spent to do this. And the animators have come out and since said that, yeah, we were worked to the bone on this. Jumping ahead of myself, the point is, Sonic comes out with the trailer for the live action Sonic the Hedgehog that's kind of Scooby-Doo-ish where uh, Sonic's fake. You got James Marsden in there playing a cop in a real world, but uh, it, it's mixy. It's Who Framed Roger Rabbit in it, kind of. The trailer comes out, Sonic looks like a nightmare. He looks like absolute shit. It's creepy. He's got these weird legs with fur on them. N none of the aesthetic is pleasing. He doesn't match his game counterpart. He's 80% there, but that 20% that's missing is wholly missing. It it's really disturbing. And so after a massive amount of blowback, of fans being in an uproar over this nightmare fuel, the studio made the decision to go back and completely change it all. They had a huge amount of this film done and they went back and ripped out the model of Sonic and replaced him with a different one that looked 99.9% .9 like the game with a couple tweaks to make it more movie ready. And Sonic looked great and the movie was good. It was a good time, simple, easy, Bingo, bango, bongo, we're out, we're ready for a sequel. Another time where a sequel I thought was a little too big for its britches. The movie goes on far too long. It has some weird Bridezilla storyline where Sonic's not even in the film for 10 minutes while she goes in this complete wedding rage across the golf course. Just odd, odd choices with that film. But um, when, when you're able to both marry the fans of the games with general audiences, you, you wouldn't believe how well it can actually work out. And you don't need to pander to one or the other. Focus on story first and the rest will come into the fold. Another example of a movie working out bad for everyone involved would be Street Fighter. Remember that little gem with Jean-Claude Van Damme? I actually did a movie roast on my channel, Adam Does Movies. I, I'm proud of it. I think it's hilarious. But uh, I went through the entire movie, talked about all the negatives, which, spoiler, there's a lot. They took all the iconic characters from the game. Chun-Li, Kami, Ryu, Ken, Sagat, and Bison. Every, the list goes on for a long time. And the casting is actually pretty good for a lot of it. But instead of having them be their iconic characters where they're, you know, they're martial arts experts or they're uh, assassins... Chun-Li's a reporter, Balrog's a camera guy, professional boxer Balrog's a camera guy, sumo wrestler E. Honda is the, uh, what, he's like the editor? It's just insane. They just gave them these basic bitch positions in the real world. Ken and Ryu are like these low-life smugglers of weapons. It, just none of it worked out. It was very corny. And I, I, the tone just wasn't there for anyone, at least not at the time. I think it has a cult following now uh, because it is fun. It's really fun to watch and laugh kind of at it more than with it. But uh, regardless, there's some entertainment there for sure. Just not the kind I'm interested in. I, m I mentioned Mario by Illumination. That's how you do it the right way. Beautiful graphics, simple characters, easy storyline to understand. It hits every age group. What didn't work was the Mario Brothers movie that came out in the 90s. The gritty live action film that was a disaster behind the scenes and the final product was even more so one. Bob Hoskins plays Mario. You got John Leguizamo as Luigi. It's, it's, it almost has to be seen to believe how bad the movie is. It has almost nothing to do with the video game. The plot's paper thin in the game to be fair, but what they came up with here is just absolute atrocious garbage. Uh, getting back to kind of the message of this podcast is, I guess, really twofold. It's it's like threefold. It's a, tr it's a truffle. It's a trifle. Don't be an asshole when people criticize something you like in the form of a different medium. 
Oh, you love the Five Nights at Freddy's games. That's great. This movie should stand on its own, though. It can be a companion piece, sure, but you have to draw in an audience and tell them what's going on and make them understand and give them something that's digestible. Making a movie that has all these weird, I guess, callbacks to the game, that's the other thing is the comments make you seem like you're dumb for not liking the storyline, but the storyline wasn't complex. It was just dumb. It was just bad. So that's one thing. Maybe understand that what you like might not be compatible with what other people like, but stop and actually listen to what they're saying instead of just throwing out insults or hurling, you know, ignorant statements back. Just, just listen. Take a beat. Second thing. Studios need to understand that you have to do more than just put out a movie with a game license. Like Need for Speed. Oh, it's got uh, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. This is a surefire hit. No. That movie was terrible. You gotta put in some work with it. Like they did, actually, with Gran Turismo. A movie that I saw last year. Well, it was this year, I guess. Blown away. I thought for sure. Oh, my God. Much like Ralph Breaks the Internet. I saw the trailers for it, and I thought, okay, so this is Sony just doing a two-hour advertisement for how great they are and Gran Turismo, the game series. This is the most pathetic thing ever. I watched the movie and it's damn good. It actually had good characters, a great story, some fun lessons, uh, a based on true story plot that really resonated, I think, with a lot of people. It was definitely made with two, I think, two main focuses. One, obviously, sell some games sell some PlayStations, get the brand out there more. But two, make a good movie. It was refreshing. It was very refreshing. The third thing I'd point out, don't be an asshole in the comments. Understand that people have different opinions, especially when it comes to movies. Two, studios need to try with their products. They can't just slap a label. And the third thing I would say about these video game movies is don't be afraid to change some stuff but don't go so far away from the game that it's not even the same thing anymore. You could look at something like X-Men, for instance, the Brian Singer films early on, and then they kind of continue the trend going forward, of introducing some of the fan favorites from the comics and the animated show. Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, Jean Grey, Beast, Professor X. They'd come and go. What he changed about them were the outfits. At the time... <laughs> Yellow spandex didn't really translate well, at least in the wardrobe department. They couldn't make that work. So instead, he went with a very bland, very basic, very much early 2000s look. The black leather, the, the Matrix look from the, the late 90s. It, trans, it, it transferred for a couple years. The leather was in. And so he went with that. And I think for the time it came out, it didn't hurt the picture. It also didn't kill me. It did, it did kill some fans that Wolverine was tall. I thought Hugh Jackman embodied the role very well. Yeah, Wolverine's a short, stocky dude with a hot-headed temper, but Jackman really made it his own. So yes, you can take creative license. You look at something like Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie. They didn't really take any creative license. Angelina Jolie's a smoke show. That was one of the requirements for Tomb Raider. Make her look great. Lara Croft looks great. Angelina knocks it out of the park. So there are some good case studies to be had. For the most part, though, these games usually get it very wrong. These game movies, they, they cast a character that looks nothing like their counterpart, set them in an uh, area that has nothing to do with the game, the storyline is just completely all over the place, or they just pander so hard to their audience on social media before the movie even comes out that they've made up their mind about the film. Yes, this movie was made for me and not for regular moviegoers, so I'm going to alienate them. I'm gonna make them feel dumb, or I'm gonna make them feel less worthy to go watch this. You should want more people to go to the movie to celebrate what you like so that you get more of it. Of course, Five Nights at Freddy's, I think, did pretty damn well because, again, it's based on a popular video game franchise, and the trailers looked really good. That said, I have a hard time believing a lot of the people will go back for a sequel. I know if I wasn't a movie critic who goes out and sees everything to review it, 
I would not go to a sequel for Five Nights at Freddy's based on what I saw. It didn't draw me in. Great, it's by the, the same company, the same studio that made Megan. All right. Megan was actually great. And that was also PG-13. So that can't be an excuse either. You can make it work with the rating. You just have to put in the work and not get so lost in uh, what fandom you're trying to appeal to. Make the good movie, the fans will follow. All right, I don't need to make this any longer than it needs to be. Hope you enjoyed the conversation. Hope you got something out of it. Where are you, where are you at on this? I mean, do you agree? Do you think, hey, maybe if you make a movie, it should stand on its own. You shouldn't be required to have to read a book or play some of the video games to understand the movie. It should be able to present itself, the characters and everything it's trying to do as its own medium because that's what it is. Or... Do you think, no, Adam, you, you, sh you, should, you should know all this stuff going in. It's your job now to, <laughs> to go. I can't even get through it. No one should think that. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. All right. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment if you like the video, if you have any thoughts on this, or if you've run into this um, in your own day-to-day -day with people debating uh, video game movies, books you know uh, that come from movies uh, movies that come from books i can't talk uh, it's it's getting late when i'm recording let me know if you haven't please think about subscribing to the channel the podcast on spotify apple podcasts and other podcasting services trying to grow them over there you're free to watch and listen on youtube of course too that's where i primarily post all my stuff but i am putting the live streams out on the podcast as well. So you have more to listen to every single week when you're driving or you're doing whatever, whatever you're doing, playing a video game. Playing a video game and listen to me. It's a win-win. All right, thanks very much. And hopefully I'll catch you next time. Take care.